what's going on guys welcome back uh, I'm gonna be doing another video on the CMD loads something I want to revisit here um, this is gonna basically be a remake of the original how-to video I did covering my method of making the CMD loads not much has changed um, in terms of putting them together uh, we're still using the same bases and really the same kind of materials but I've kind of uh, changed some materials I'm using and I've been doing them in a bit of a different way here and I thought this would be worth uh, kind of updating. A couple people have asked me about my new loads as well and said well they look a lot different than the ones I was showing in that video and it's just because I've taken a lot of time going back and uh, trying some new effects and new techniques on making these and using a lot more different materials, a lot finer materials to get different effects uh, for a lot more prototypically realistic load basically. So I've gone back and I've changed a lot, of, a, a couple things on these. Uh, so I thought it'd be worth kind of uh, showing, uh, just because a lot of other people have kind of asked me about why my loads look a little bit different than what I showed in the video. So um, this will be a remake of that video. Uh, I'm not going to delete the original because that has quite a few views, and a lot of people still watch that video and get a lot of in helpful insight on that video. So I'm just going to keep that up uh, in its respect uh, where it lies. But I'll go ahead and add a second part to this video, I guess, showing my modernized uh, CND construction demolition loads. These are some examples of cars I've already done. I have a multitude of these that I've built uh, from different manufacturers. Some of them I've scratch built, some of them I've kit bashed. Uh, these are relatively stock Walther's and Xactrail gondolas that I've done custom patching and everything to to uh, model particular prototypes. But here you guys can see a good uh, image of what these loads look like inside the cars. They're wrapped in a special netting which keeps all of this fine debris from flying out of the gondolas and transport. Uh, so I'll be showing you guys also how to wrap these loads as well, but this is basically what we're going to be modeling is these really nice looking uh, demolition loads here. Just like in the previous video on making these CMD loads, I'm going to be using foam cutouts, basically permanent inserts into these gondolas. Uh, so it's the similar method I showed in the previous uh, video that I did on these CND loads. Uh, I basically use the kind of packing foam that you find in like Atherin locomotive boxes. I basically cut strips of foam out to size, roughly depending on the kind of car I'm making. In this particular case, this load is cut out to fit one of these exact rail gondolas, uh, these really nice high side wood chip cars that are used in CND service now. They're owned by Hainsport Industrial Railway. Uh, but I've cut these strips out to size and I've kind of beveled the edges a little bit so that they have like a slope piled up look like the real loads have. That's a difference that I've done between the original loads where they were just basically flat. So this is something else I do. So all you gotta do is basically take these foam inserts, cut them out, and then basically plane the sides, trim them down a little bit, and that's basically how you do these foam inserts. It's very, very simple, very easy. Um, one of those blocks of foam, you can actually cut them out if you're very careful. You can cut at least three of these strips out depending on what kind of car you're making. So the loads themselves, I'm going to be using a multitude of different materials here. Uh, and just like the real loads, I'm not just using one material, I'm using multiple different materials. I have my uh, collection of scraps of plastic, all kinds of different metal scraps, uh, photo etch scraps, plastic, rubber, all kinds of basically scraps from projects, mostly styrene. I have aluminum shavings, which I have for these loads. I have white eggshells which basically represent house wrap, uh, drywall, stuff like that. These work really well. So I just took some uh, hard-boiled eggshells, ground them up, dried them out real well, and then uh, crushed them a little bit so I can have these uh, uh, fine little pieces. And they work well for that uh, drywall and uh, paper material that you see in these loads. I got some fine brick that I've uh, ground up and sifted to size. I have aluminum and steel uh, very fine sorted metal shavings and uh, basically crushed scrap metal here that I also use for these loads. I have two different kinds of wood. I have fine wood dust and I have fine wood shavings so I can represent plywood and various fine particles of wood. And then I have the main C and D material here which I've mixed up from baking soda, sand, gravel, and again some scraps from various materials and I have quite a bit of this here as well. Uh, it takes quite a bit to make these loads and I mix all of these materials in each load. No two are alike here and that's the nice thing about using all these various materials and again you get all the nice effects of all the different materials mixed together. So I'll go ahead and start working on these loads next here and we'll start applying. 
So with all the materials out and the, glue, and the uh, bases ready here, the glue I'm going to be using to glue all the materials down, starting off, will be Elmer's Glue Wall. This is a really good glue for this project. I particularly like the glue wall because it's a little bit stronger than regular white glue. You can use wood glue too, however wood glue is a little bit more aggressive. Uh, and you've got to be kind of careful with some of this foam sometimes because I have had times where I've used wood glue and it's eaten up the foam a little bit. But all I'm going to do for these loads is I take a little bit of this glue, I pour it on the load like this, not too much, and then I just take a paintbrush and spread it around on the load to cover all of these little nooks and crannies, but the load entirely, the insert rather, has to be completely covered. So with this project it's best to start with the uh, larger materials first and then basically you're going to be laying on the finer materials after. So what I like to start with is my uh, relatively coarse gray materials here. I like to just kind of sprinkle these on and get them built up and piled up kind of in some piles here like this. I'll add a little bit of a layer of that first. Kind of center it off on the load a little bit just like that and then I can basically go and start laying in all my finer materials. So then I switch to my main C and D mix and I get a good handful of that and I start sprinkling that on. Once I've done that I take my brick layer that on. Next I add the sawdust represent some wood some metal shavings all the various metal shavings here And you can kind of vary this, you know, you can kind of go back and forth depending on what you're achieving with the look here. If there's more brick, then add more brick. If there's less brick, then don't add as much. Maybe add a little bit more metal here and there. Whichever, it's totally up to you here. But as long as you get all these materials on here. After I've gotten all the materials mixed in, then I just finish it off with a little bit more of the main CD mix and I just pile it on and blend everything together. Just like that. So with all the materials installed, you guys can see what these should look like. See, it's quite a mess of different materials here. And that's basically C&D loads in a nutshell. Uh, all kinds of different load, or load materials scattered together. And it's a really, really nice effect. As you can see, they're all different. They all vary to an extent. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to carefully move these to another room and we'll start spraying these with some Woodland Scenic Cement to seal everything up. Last thing I do to these, I take a little bit of Woodland Scenic Cement and I set it up on a piece of cardboard like this so I can easily remove them later. I'll fill up the glue in a spray bottle like this and I'll get about a foot above the load and give these a good misting with the Scenic Cement. Um, once I've done that, I'll go back over these loads with just one more spritz and sprinkle of the uh, fine particles just to suck up any additional excess glue that might be on top of some like decal paper or something like that. Okay, so with the final bit of glue installed on these loads, we're going to go ahead and let these dry for 24 hours. It's very important you let them sit for 24 hours and make sure this glue is completely dry before we move on to the next step here. So the loads are pretty much done at this point. Um, I've only taken two. The others I'm going to set aside for a little bit because I'm actually building the cars for them, but I have two of the Loads that I've cut to fit the exact trail Gunderson wood chip cars. I have them here. They're looking pretty good, as you can see. Uh, all of it is pretty well glued in place, and you have a nice heaping garbage load. Uh, and it looks really nice, and it scales down really well as well. Uh, as you guys know, I've talked about this before, these loads are wrapped in a special netting which prevents any of the debris from flying out. Now, some haulers do not use this netting and you can, uh, depending on what kind of car you're modeling or what road it's from, uh, you can refer to prototype photos and model your loads accordingly, but most of the loads these days are regulated and have netting uh, that cover them. In this case of the uh, Hainsport Industrial wood chip cars that I'm modeling, and using these loads for, they use the netting. Now, the netting I do use is tool fabric. And you can get this stuff at uh, any good fabric store. Uh, I recently picked up some, uh, some of this netting from Walmart. They actually have a couple se selections. The most common color you see in terms of netting is the orange. So I use this most common. So 
Um, this is the more common style and color of netting you'll see on these cars. So generally, I'll pick up a little bit of the orange and use this the most. But other colors you will see are white. You will see black. And I don't have it here right now, but you'll also see blue occasionally. Uh, I've seen a couple companies ship their loads with uh, blue tarp leg, uh, netting. excuse me. Uh, in this particular case, the Hainesport cars are actually going to be wrapped in black tool fabric. So I'm going to be using this material. So generally what I like to do, I like to cut a somewhat large square sheet of this netting out from the main part of the roll. And this will be enough to do at least two of the loads that we're going to be demonstrating in this video today. So, what I like to do, I like to start with the straightest possible edge like this. If you need to kind of true up an edge, you can just take a straight edge and carefully cut it, but be careful this uh, material does have a tendency to uh, bunch up a little bit. Scissors are actually a little bit better in a lot of cases too, especially if you need to get into uh, the little fine corners, like say you're trimming the edges uh, around the load, which we'll do in a minute, I'll be able to kind of demonstrate that. But basically you start with a large sheet like this, once you've cut it off the main roll, and what I like to do is I'll take the net, or have it laid out, and then I'll take the load and flip it over very carefully. And I'll center it kind of out on the outside edge. I'll kind of bend this up a little bit so it's not all crooked. And I'll just have it so that the corner of the load is sitting just off the edge of this netting here. And basically what we'll do is we'll start folding this over and wrapping it. What I'm going to do next is go ahead and cut this little edge out with a pair of scissors. Just very carefully taking a nice sharp set of uh, scissors and I'm just cutting down the edge of this netting around the load. Doesn't have to be perfect, just as long as you have some of that material overhang. That way you'll be able to actually wrap it over the top of the load. There we go. So there's no particular order you have to go in when wrapping this netting. I usually like to start with the ends myself, and I'll usually wrap them with scotch tape. I prefer the packaging tape. It's a little bit stronger, and you get these large rolls like this, so you can cover a, a larger area pretty quick. But I start with the fold on the end. I take a section of tape, and I tape it down like this. Take another piece of tape, grab the other end like this. Fold it over, and then I just stretch the tape over the netting on the inside of the load, and tape it down, like that. I will now start from the corner that's the farthest from me, and I will wrap the net over, and I'll take another piece of tape, stretch it out as much as I can, tape that down. And then, basically, you just go and repeat this process until you get to the other end of the car. But this load has to look tight, it can't be airy, you want this to look very, very tight. These nets do have a little bit of weight to them so they usually conform to the uh, the shape and outline of the load but they're not airy like a tarp load or something like that it actually is tied down to the load so it looks pretty tight so you want this netting to be nice and tight so just stretch it out as you go one more end to do here I'm going to trim this extra little bit of material off like that, just so there's not so much so I don't have to risk having it fold over to the other side and getting in the way. And then I'll just get that all nice and tight and strap it down. Now we'll switch to the other side and it is the exact same process basically so I'm just going to repeat this process that we did for this side onto this side. And again, as you're doing this, make sure this netting is tight. You want this load to be very, very tight, not airy at all. After you get all the netting taped on, it should look something like this. You can see it's nice and tight around the load. It's not too airy. It's nice and tight. And that's exactly what we want. It has to look settled on the load, and we've achieved that here with the scotch tape and the tool fabric. Again, nice and tight on the... Uh... Alright guys, so that'll wrap up this video on these modernized C&D loads. Hope you liked it. As always, if you have any questions, leave comments below. I'm always willing to try to answer as many questions as if I can. If I don't see your comments, I'm sorry. Uh, they might get buried sometimes, but I try to do my best to try to answer as many questions as possible. I, I don't want you guys to be left in the dark. I want to be able to you know, help you guys learn how to do this and be able to answer your questions. So leave comments below. Uh, you guys can follow me on all my social media. Dan's Custom Trains is my Facebook page. I am Daniel Arnold on Facebook. My Instagram is CoolHandDano5. That is all lowercase, and I'm always posting pictures of models 
uh, projects like that. Matter of fact, I've been posting pictures of these CND loads in my uh, modern gondolas lately, so that's been a, kind of a hot topic on my page lately. Uh, but again, follow me on my social media, subscribe here on YouTube, and stay tuned for more. As always, take care, and I will see you next time. See you guys.